In the Star Trek The Next Generation episode Pegasus, the USS Grissom model from Star Trek III was reused as the USS Pegasus. That wasn't always going to be the case though. At least two other options were considered before ultimately going with the Oberth class for the Pegasus. This was due to budget constraints. The episode was already expensive with all the new effect shots they needed, like all the shots of the Enterprise flying through the asteroid field. Ultimately, that meant missing out on a Starship class that slots perfectly into Starfleet's pattern of Starship design. If random obscure Star Trek stuff is your sort of thing, subscribing is the best way to support the channel. With that said, let's set the scene with a brief episode synopsis, and then take a look at the unrealized ship that was almost the USS Pegasus. Here's a brief recap of the episode Pegasus. The Enterprise is visited by Riker's former commanding officer, Admiral Pressman. While he was captain, he commanded the USS Pegasus, a ship thought lost 12 years prior. Also serving on the Pegasus was a young Commander Riker. Correction, Ensign Riker. Interesting side note, actors Terry O'Quinn and Jonathan Frakes are the same age. Anyway, supposedly there were mutants aboard the Pegasus. Mutiny? On a Federation starship? That's... that's shocking. It's... it's unthinkable. Without spoiling anything, the ship meets a dark fate. It's fused with an asteroid, because that's the sort of thing that happens when a Starfleet Admiral is involved. Riker needs to own up to choices he's made in the past, and it's a good episode worth revisiting. Since the ship was fused in an asteroid, we only get to see the front section of the exterior. Side note, these spotlights on Pegasus are coming from the Enterprise. To my knowledge, this is the only time we see the Enterprise D's spotlights used. Going into the episode, Rick Sternbach, the artist who helped define much of the look of the next generation, drew up a concept of what the Pegasus could look like. Since the story explained that the ship had experimental technology that would have been used on future ships like the Enterprise-D, it makes sense that it would be from a generation of starship directly preceding the Galaxy class. The Pegasus was a prototype. Experimental engine, new weapon systems. In fact, some of our designs were used in constructing the Enterprise. Sternbach, who also helped design the Ambassador class Enterprise-C, offered up this. It would have been a kit bash of the Ambassador class to create a new class of starship. Just a bit of background. Kit bashing is where model makers would throw together existing model parts and molds to create new starships. So not to be confused with kit bashing. You're about as much fun as a divorce. So what makes this interesting is that in Star Trek lore, Starfleet's main heavy cruiser starships like the Constitution class and Galaxy class usually had condensed variants like the Miranda and Nebula classes. If these were the sedans, these would be their hatchback equivalents. It makes sense that the Ambassador class would have had something similar. This concept art is really a straightforward kit bash. It doesn't appear to have any modified parts from the Ambassador class. It's just chopped up and rearranged. Of course, during the model making process, there would have been tweaks in order to get the parts to fit together better. Since this ship was mostly covered in asteroid, a lot of the rough spots of how things fit together would have been concealed anyway. However, it never reached that point since this concept was dismissed during pre-production. This concept drawing also offers us a front view of the ship. This shows that the nacelles and pylons would have been directly attached to the outer portion of the saucer, again giving the ship a similar configuration to the Miranda and Nebula classes, with how the nacelles tuck in under the saucer. When you consider that this is basically an ambassador class with the neck removed, it only has slightly less interior space. Otherwise, it makes sense that this Pegasus concept is every bit as capable as an ambassador class. When we see its engineering room, this display shows four nacelles. It's rumored that the Cheyenne class, seen ever so briefly in the Wolf 359 graveyard scene from The Best of Both Worlds, was also considered. This model is pretty crude, even by background ship standards, but it may have worked since the ship was going to be mostly concealed anyways. If that's the case, then these four nacelles may have been remnants of that. Whatever the case, the USS Pegasus would have met the same fate. A fate that tragically ends the lives of many Starfleet officers. So, that's the video. I know it's hard to think about anything else during times like this, but I am working on a series of DS9 videos that are taking a fair bit of time to finish, so in the meantime, I just wanted to take a look at smaller topics like this and just share some of the more obscure topics in Star Trek history. Um, 
I'd like to thank these mutinous traders for all their support of the channel. I really appreciate it. Thanks for watching, and um, yeah, I'll catch you in the next video. We're not here for a memorial service. <laughs>